Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Hutton Summers, and as Dairy Fields Poetry Out Loud coordinator and a lover of poetry myself, I would like to welcome you to our 12th annual Poetry Out Loud Festival. To begin, I would like to thank the following organizations for giving us this program. The National Endowment for the Arts, the Poetry Foundation, and the New Hampshire State Council on the Arts. I'd also like to thank the faculty and staff who will be judging the performances today. Dr. Silverstein, Mr. Westenberg, Ms. Schutz, Dr. Schleffinger, Mr. Hunton, Mrs. Byron, and our calculations wizard, Mr. Watt. Here's how our competition will work. We will hear from eight contestants today. Each contestant will introduce his, her, or their poem, the title, the author, and then recites. When each is finished, we will enjoy some music from a few dairy field musicians from the past, while the judges take a moment to fill out the scoring sheets. A little background. The contestants you will hear today have all worked hard preparing with their classroom English teachers to declaim their poems today. And so this performance marks their commitment and collective dedication to the art of spoken word and poetics. The decisions of our judges are final and confidential. The winner will be announced via email on Monday, so look for that announcement in your inbox. The school champion and an alternate will advance to the regional semifinals competition in March, where the champion will compete against students from the South Central New Hampshire area with three poems, and from there, perhaps move on to the state and national championships. As you experience each participant's performance, allow yourself to enjoy the artistry that is declaiming a poem and give our participants your full attention. They deserve it after all the effort that they've put in. And if you see one of our brave contestants around campus or in a Zoom classroom, please be sure to congratulate them on their performance. And now, here is our competitors in the order that they will compete. Micah Johnson, Sam Rappaport, Lane Daniels, Savannah Davis, Crystal Zhao, Sophie Rose Riappel, Kazu Lorman, and Sarah Murphy. Enjoy. Last Snow by Hyde Erdrich. Dumped wet and momentary on a dull ground that's been clear but clearly sleeping for days. Last snow melts as it falls, piles up slush, runs in first light, making a music in the streets we wish we could keep. Last snow, that's what we'll think for weeks to come. Close sun sets up a glare that smarts like a good cry. We could head north and north and never let this season go. <sighs> Stubborn beast. The body reads the past in the change of light. Knows the blow of grief in the time of trees' tight-fisted leaves. Stubborn calendar of bone. Last snow. Now it must always be so. Thank you. Forgetfulness by Billy Collins. The name of the author is the first to go, followed obediently by the title, the plot, 
the heartbreaking conclusion, the entire novel, which suddenly becomes one you have never read, never even heard of. As if one by one, the memories that you used to harbor have decided to retire to the southern hemisphere of the brain, to a little fishing village where there are no phones. Long ago, you kissed the names of the nine muses goodbye and watched the quadratic equation pack its bag. And even now, as you memorize the order of the planets, something else is slipping away. A seat flower, perhaps. The address of an uncle. The capital of Paraguay. Whatever it is you are struggling to remember, it is not poised on the tip of your tongue, not even lurking in some obscure corner of your spleen. It has floated down a dark mythological river whose name begins with an L, as far as you can recall. Well on your way to oblivion, where you will join those who have even forgotten how to swim and how to ride a bicycle. No wonder you rise in the middle of the night to look up the date of a famous battle in a book on war. No wonder the moon in the window seems to have drifted out of a love poem that you used to know by heart. tell you what a poem brings by Juan Felipe Herrera. Before you go further, let me tell you what a poem brings. First, you must know the secret. There is no poem. To speak of, it is a way to attain a life without boundaries. Yes, it is that easy, a poem. Imagine me telling you this. Instead of going day by day against the razors, the judgments, the tick-tock bronze, a leather jacket sizing you up, the fashion mall. For example, from the outside, you think you are being entertained. When you enter, things change. You get caught by surprise. Your mouth grows sour. You get thirsty. Your legs grow cold, standing still in the middle of a storm. A poem, of course, is always open for business. Except, as you can see, it isn't exactly business that pulls you into the alarming waters. There, you can bathe. You can play. You can even join in on the gossip. The mist, that is the mist, becomes central to your existence. Thoughtless Cruelty by Charles Lamb Bear, Robert, you have killed that fly. And should you thousand ages try the life you've taken to supply, you could not do it. You surely must have been devoid of thought and sense to have destroyed a thing which no way you annoyed, you'll one day rue it. Twas but a fly, perhaps you'll say, 
that's born in April, dies in May, that does but just learn to display his wings one minute, and in the next is vanished quite. A bird devours it in his flight, or come a cold blast in the night, there's no breath in it. The bird but seeks his proper food, and providence whose power endued that fly with life when it thinks good may just be taken. But you have no excuses for it. A life by nature made so short, less reason is that you for sport should shorter make it. A fly, a little thing you rate, but Robert, do not estimate a creature's pain by small or great. The greatest being can have but fibers, nerves, and flesh. And these, the smallest ones possess, although their frame and structure less escape our seeing. Thank you. An Anthology of Rain by Phyllis Levin For this you may see no need You may think my aim that sat on something Devoid of conceivable value An Anthology of Rain, a collection of voices Telling someone somewhere what it means to follow a drop traveling to its final place of rest. But do you consider this request. If you have pressed your nose of any shape against a window, odor of metal faints persistence, while a storm casts a cloak over the shoulder of every cloud. In sight, you are free to say whatever crosses your mind when you look at the face of time. In the passing of one drop, gathering speed, one drop, chasing another, racing to reach. A fork in the path, lingering, before making a detour to join. Another, fattening on the way. Until entering a rivulet, running to the sill. So please accept this invitation. You are welcome to submit. There is no limit to it limits. Even the instructions are a breeze. As long as you include nothing about yourself except your name, your address remains unnecessary for the rain will find you. If you receive it, it receives you. Whether or not you contribute, the volume is sense. When you lift the collection you may hear, by opening anywhere, a drop and a star reappear. As air turns to water, water to air.
Songs for the People by Frances Ellen Watkins Harper. Let me make the songs for the people, songs for the old and young, songs to stir like a battle cry, wherever they are sung. Not for the clashing of sabres, for carnage nor for strife, but songs to thrill the hearts of men with more abundant life. Let me make the songs for the weary amid life's fever and fret, till hearts shall relax their tension and careworn brows forget. Let me sing for little children before their footsteps stray, sweet anthems of love and duty to float o'er life's highway. I would sing for the poor and aged when shadows dim their sight, of bright and restful mansions where there shall be no night. Our world, so worn and weary, needs music pure and strong to hush the jangle and discords of sorrow, pain, and wrong. Music to soothe all its sorrow till war and crime shall cease in the hearts of men grown tender, girdle the world with peace. Last Snow by Hyde E. Erdrich Dumped wet and momentary on a dull ground That's been clear, but clearly sleeping for days Last snow melts as it falls Piles up slush, runs in first light Making a music in the street we wish we could keep Last snow That's what we'll think for weeks to come Close sun sets up a glare that smarts like a good cry. We could head north and north and never let this season go. Stubborn beast, the body reads the past in the change of light. Knows the blow of grief in the time of trees' tight-fisted leaves. Stubborn calendar of bone. Last snow. Now it must always be so. Gravity Furnace by Francine J. Harris She wants to set the house on fire. Gas in both hands. Gas on the walls. It'd be like the sea, torched from its floor. She'd run like light from basement windows, or maybe suck all arms to room ablaze, so housed in gut piping, the copper hollowed reaching to a heated black rot at bottom. Like ants, maybe she'd crawl in the dark, low on the belly, maybe she'd thug out late, lay low and ink eight walls. 
lay low like cold she might strip bare black glass sometimes strut sometimes hide late she runs from house to ember a sum of sink she breathes through flame a room of spoons one bar brick one black-eyed room splatter one torch spent for each arm from coal to alley she heaves hue of concrete into each limb A house of blue ring flames to mimic. Someone better run. Thank you so much for your supportive attention as an audience. We so hoped you enjoyed hearing these gorgeous declamations and don't forget to check your email for the winner announcement on Monday morning. And now we have a special performance today from DS freshman Jacob Willett performing Shelter on the piano. Jacob will send us off today as our featured DS artists. Thank you, Jacob, for sharing your talents with us.
What a great day for the arts at Dairyfield. Be well and keep the power of poetry and piano performance in your hearts. And now, seniors.